Shane Beamer has already taken South Carolina to heights that people didn't expect this early in his tenure. Now, there's still plenty of ways to go, but this is a team that's going to be exciting to watch. One of the hottest teams in the end of 2021. They finished 7-6, and six, and after that bowl game, everybody, almost everybody at least, thinks that they're going to be an exciting team in the SEC East. With the talent that they have returning on top of what they have coming in via the transfer portal, it's easy to see why people are excited for this team, why they think that they could be a contender in the SEC East. Obviously, there's a couple teams that they're going to have to overthrow, which will be tough, but the talent they have returning is reason for excitement and reason to believe that this is going to be an even better team in 2022. Spencer Rattler comes into South Carolina to join Shane Beamer once again, and after a year which was kind of full of controversy and some drama, he gets a chance to start over. And with the team that he joins, a team that sorely needed a starting quarterback, I mean, even in the bowl game, DeCarrion Joyner was really the star quarterback of that game. And when your wide receiver is your star quarterback, there is some concern with that. Now, it was fun to watch, but it's not a sustainable way to run your offense. Spencer comes in with all the talent in the world. He has an elite arm, and if he's able to fit into this system and get back to what we expected from him heading into the 2021 season, this offense, with the talent that they have, is going to be one of the best in college football and one of the most exciting with the weapons that they return. Spencer Rattler is going to be the leader of that offense, and he has the talent to be able to get players the football and really get his... NFL career back on track his NFL hopes back on trap track and it's going to be fun to watch if he's firing on all cylinders how South Carolina uses Jaheim Bell is probably the most interesting thing about this offense outside of Spencer Rattler the tight end can split out and play wide receiver with Austin Stogner coming in from Oklahoma following Rattler there's going to be times where they're going to put both of them on the field, and if Bell can be more of that wide receiver, which he has the talent, he has the athleticism to be able to do that, I think that's this is going to be fun to watch. Now that he has a quarterback that can get him the football consistently, his 497 yards and five touchdowns are going to go up. There's really no reason to believe he can't double those numbers, maybe even better than that. But it's going to be fun to watch what, how they use him and what does Spencer Rattler's arrival mean for him. Cornerback Cam Smith continues to gain plenty of attention at the next level, and it's easy to see why. After last year, his ability to show that he can shut people down, his athleticism, his length, it, it's fun to watch a player like him, and it's easy to see why the next level really likes him. Last year, he had 11 passes defended and three interceptions, so teams weren't afraid to test him, and they're probably going to reel that back a little bit this year because of what he was capable of doing, and he's a big reason why this defense is going to be tough to beat. At least they have the the first line of defense. It's going to be interesting. It just comes down to is there depth behind them. Guys like Cam Smith will lead the way, but what is behind them if there are if they go down, if they have to sit out for a little bit, what's behind them is going to be that big question. South Carolina's offensive and defensive lines provide plenty of excitement. There's a ton of reasons to like what they have returning, and we're going to talk about a few of them here. It was tough to leave some of them off the list. It's going to be it's going to be okay, though. It's going to be fun to see what these guys are capable of doing, and they're going to have a big impact because in the SEC, if you don't have good players in the trenches, it's going to be a long season for you. Zach Pickens is one of those guys that's going to play a big role. Doesn't have the best statistics, but that's what's going to happen when you play defensive tackle. You're not going to have the stats that the defensive end has. You're not going to have the stats that most other players have. He was still disruptive, even though he doesn't have the stats. You really have to go and watch the film and see what he's capable of doing because sometimes his big impact is plugging things up the middle and not allowing the offense to move the ball efficiently. So he is going to have a major impact, and this defensive line is going to be fun to watch. Narrowing down which pass catchers to put on this list was difficult. However, Josh Fan was an easy addition to the list. 
Uh, 679 yards and five touchdowns last year with uh, keep in mind with a quarterback that isn't of Spencer Rattler's talent. It, it, it's not at his level. Now you get a chance to have a quarterback who can get you the ball more consistently. And Josh Mann could be an explosive playmaker for South Carolina. He almost averaged 16 yards per catch last year. And there's reason, plenty of reasons to believe that he can be even better now that he has a quarterback that can get him the football deep, that can hit him downfield. And he's going to get open. It just comes down to Ken Rattler have the chemistry. Can they find the chemistry together to be able to get the ball downfield, to get open? And from there, it's really just letting the talent take over. Jordan Birch didn't have the best statistical season, but I'm really high on what he can do this year. South Carolina, like I said, they have the talent in the trenches to be able to compete, and that's huge, especially in the SEC East. Now, you're looking at teams like Georgia who are, are really good, and you know Georgia just won the national championship. So I don't know if South Carolina has the talent to beat a team like Georgia, but they have the talent in the trenches to at least make things interesting. Jordan Birch, like I said, is not someone that's going to potentially dominate. However... He has the talent to do that, and it just comes down to can he do that on a consistent basis, and what do the guys around him do to help him out? Another guy that's going to help Jordan Strachan is going to be fun to watch. The former Georgia State transfer found that he could make that, that switch to the SEC from the Sun Belt and had a decent year on the edge, and, and I think that his experience, and now he has a full year under his belt, in the SEC and he knows what to expect, it's going to be fun to watch what he and Birch can do on the edge. They have Pickens up the middle and those two on the edge. Makes life a little bit easier for the linebackers they have returning. Going to be a fun group to watch and it just comes down to, again, consistency. Can they do what they need to do in order to compete in this division, really, and even in the conference? Beating a team like Georgia isn't easy, like I said, but some of these guys have the chance to take over and prove that they belong. We talked about DeCarry and Joyner earlier, but he's going to be more of a wide receiver this year, and he is going to be fun to watch. I really like what he's capable of doing on top of being a trick play option as well. With the talent they have returning, you can utilize him in some different packages as well. He's proven that he can do that, and maybe he takes a step forward as a, a pass catcher, you could have put Austin Stogner in this position too, but to carry and Joyner is a potential explosive player, a reliable playmaker that could be really fun to watch with Spencer Rattler running the show. With Rattler's arrival, Eric Douglas becomes an, a vital part of this operation as well. The center needs to find some chemistry with Rattler. That means taking a bunch of snaps, figuring out calls together, being able to bring Rattler up to speed because once Spencer gets up to speed, it comes down to getting in sync and that's going to be difficult but if they're able to do that it's still going to make South Carolina a very tough team to stop and this is a veteran leader on a talented offensive line like I mentioned it's just going to come down to can they find chemistry with their new quarterback and will they be able to handle the pressure and the talent that is in the SEC East. Running back Juju McDowell is one of the leaders of a talented and deep running back group you look at what they have returning mcdowell is one of those guys marshawn lloyd is back christian beale smith comes in from wake forest that is a good trio of running backs and that means that touches are probably going to be hard to come by but also it's really exciting for these three because they have the talent to be explosive spencer Adler does so many things for this offense but there's so many pass catchers and so many running backs that can make an impact as well. It's just going to come down to which one of them can be consistent in their limited time because they're not going to be the bell cow that gets all the touches and gets all the snaps. So it's going to be interesting. How do they adapt to that? South Carolina is an extremely intriguing team. They have the talent in the trenches and at the skill positions to be a contender in the SEC East. It just comes down to do they have the talent to be at the level of a Georgia or someone up there like the Alabamas. I don't think they're there quite yet, but with the talent that they have returning and what Shane Beamer is doing in Columbia, it's going to be a fun time to be a South Carolina fan. And 2022 is set to be one of the more entertaining years for this program that we've seen in a long time.